Welcome to the 12th day of September 2012. I apologize for the recent absence of content. Starting high school, or starting college rather has been a bit of a task. Anyways, we're back here today with some news. The long hyped next generation iPhone with, in my opinion, kind of a stupid name. Keep in mind this is the sixth generation product and it's called the iPhone 5. There's nothing 5 about it. It's a 4 inch screen with an A6 processor. So I don't understand where the name comes from unless they're trying to go in succession from the iPhone to the 3G, the 3GS, which was the third gen, the 4, the 4S, and now a 5, the sixth generation product. Anyhow, we have a couple changes here. None of them are um, completely dramatic as far as I'm concerned. But I am rather excited to get mine in uh, 10 days or 2 weeks or whenever that happens to be. Anyways, there's the name, the iPhone 5. The biggest thing that happens to iPhone since iPhone. I think that's a bit of a bold statement. But we are, we are going to take a look at some photos and the tech specs. They stretched it. It's maybe uh, an inch higher. I don't know. I haven't watched the keynote yet. Um, they have two color options as they have before. It's black and white. The white has... Well, let's let's talk about this. The um, the rumors that we've been seeing on Mac rumors and all kinds of different websites showing a larger, taller iPhone with a bigger screen and a different uh, back composite material being aluminum and glass instead of all the glass like the iPhone 4 and 4S. Uh, those were right. They are aluminum in the middle. On the black one, it's kind of a it, it almost looks like a matte black finish around the exterior, uh, the perimeter outside of the phone, as well as that center portion in the back. Uh, but we won't really know until we see it, I suppose. Um, and then the white one seems to be just brushed aluminum, which looks really nice. Um, we have a bunch of new features here. I have not seen the keynote. I do not think it's available online yet. Uh, but I am going to talk about whatever they have here on the specs page. You know, I'm not going to go through everything on this page. You can get to it yourself, apple.com slash iPhone, and then click the specs button. Uh, but we still have the same capacity, 16, 32, and 64 gigabytes, the same price as the iPhone 4 and the 4S and possibly even the 3GS. It's a little bit thinner. I think it's 18% thinner, reclaiming the title of the world's thinnest smartphone for a couple weeks anyways until somebody else comes out with a piece of paper with a screen on it. It's now 4.8 inches tall which is uh, taller than before. Notice the fifth row of uh, home screen icons. I presume that means folders will be larger. It's nearly 16 by 9 now, so you can turn it sideways and watch a video without too much letterboxing. So that'll be cool. The biggest thing uh, for a lot of people is the LTE, long-term evolution uh, networking compatibility that is now on the phone. It's global LTE, so you're not going to need to worry about traveling out of the country anymore like you had with previous iPhones. The iPhone 4S, we saw a, a, a world phone, I think they called it, with GSM and CDMA technologies in it, and now it's all the HSPA+, HSDPA, all of it, it pretty much encompasses anything you're going to need, as well as 5 gigahertz 802.11n and Bluetooth 4.0 which uh, I think is new in the 5. There's our new display, the 1136 by 640. It's still a retina display, 326 PPI. The human eye is good for about 300, so that's comfortably over that. I do not think the camera sensor has changed. It's an 8 megapixel camera right now, uh, the same HD 30 frames per second um, camera for the rear. The front now is a 1.2 megapixel, looks like, uh, 720p and 30 frames per second. So that's going to be a lot better for people that use the front camera. It's, uh, the old one, I believe, was 360p or VGA quality. Uh, so we are getting a good upgrade there. Uh, LED flash, I think that is just on the back. We have some pictures here. The bottom of the device has changed quite a bit. We have the introduction of a new um, charging and syncing method. They call it lightning. It's a lot smaller. It's not going to work with your accessories. That's the big downside for me. So the, the cases with batteries in them, the docks, the car chargers, all of that isn't going to work, at least right now. It'll take a long time, I would guess, for, um, for manufacturers that produce all these accessories to start producing the runs with the right cable. Uh, the battery is a little bit larger to encompass the greater speed of the A6 chip. Supposedly, it's two times faster with processing and graphics. So, of course, that's always welcome. So, the battery is a little bit bigger to deal with that, as well as the LTE modem that's, of course, going to take some more power. Of course, we have the TV and video options here with uh, the uh, mirroring to the Apple TV in 720p. We have new headphones. Whoop de freaking do. For me, actually, I've never used the headphones that come with the 4S and my iPhone 4 and my, oh, I think, all three iPod touches I had. They all sat wrapped up in the plastic. I never used them. I probably sold them with the devices. But now they're called ear pods with remote and mic, and it looks like they come with a little storage case there. So uh, that could be cool if you use those. And they've got the inline, as I just said, remote and mic in there. I know that was an option on, on stuff before. Still has all the same requirements or the sensors in there, I don't see anything too special here. The box is a little bit different. That's what the black, the box for the black 
iPhone looks like. And then there are some accessories here. There's a lightning to the 30 pin connector, which is what Apple's been using for about nine years now. It's 30 bucks. I was really hoping they'd be shipping it with the device. And it actually looks huge. Well, think about the size. That slat there at the bottom, that is where your conventional iPod, iPad, iPhone sync cable plugs in. Um, so the, th the thing's really only maybe an inch and a quarter long. Uh, so you're going to need that for the Nano 7th generation released today, the iPod Touch 5th generation released today, as well as the iPhone 5. And when I say released, I don't think they're available to buy, at least the iPhone. Um, Pre-orders start this Friday, September 14th. I don't know what time. I remember last year it started at midnight Pacific time, which is 3 in the morning Eastern time where I am here on the East Coast. So I was up that morning until like 4 o'clock ordering my 4S, and I really hope that's not the case again this year. Uh, but as of now, we're going to have to wait and see. Looks like they're going to start shipping the 21st, which is, I believe, a week. I am correct in saying a week from this Friday, so we'll probably start seeing them hopefully that Friday and then the Saturday. Um, I am excited. It's it's a new iPhone. It's, it brings new features. They've got a bunch of pictures, of course. You can go to the site to see all of the information. But that's pretty much the new iPhone. I don't think I skipped anything big in there. Um, software, I should probably talk about that. It's going to run iOS 6. Maybe we can find something on that here. Um, so the A6, well, there's the A6 chip, but iOS 6, of course, is the next version of iOS. We're on iOS 5.1, I think, right now, or 5.02, or I don't really know. Um, and it's going to bring turn-by-turn -turn directions, and of course, it will support the larger resolution, Siri enhancements, nothing massive, but I am excited to see that. The release date for iOS 6 is one week from today, which is the 19th, next Wednesday, September 19th. So. We'll be able to download that on our iPhone 4s, 4s's, of course, the 5 will ship with it. Um, and, well, the compatibility, the full list of compatibility will be here on Apple.com. On to the iPods. Um, I have not owned an iPod now for a couple years, so it's not as big of a deal to me, but I will talk about it. The Nano just got completely re nanoed as they said. They've got a bunch of colors. Looks like black, purple, blue, possibly white there in the middle, green, yellow, and red. It's $149 for what I'm assuming to be, oh, one capacity, 16 gigabytes. I'm learning as well as you are right now. Um, it looks quite a bit like a tiny little iPod Touch, really. It's got the home button at the bottom. It kind of runs uh, an iOS esque operating system that has, of course, been uh, optimized for this smaller multi-touch display. It's got a few buttons on it. Looks cool. I can't wait to play with it in the store, but I don't see it being something that I will run out and purchase. They also worked with the iPod Touch here. We've got a couple colors, yellow, red, white, blue, and black. Comes with the same ear pods. And I'm assuming this is iOS 6 we're looking at. I'm seeing some, um, some, some uh, user interface enhancements here with the music app, so I guess that's cool. But we did get the better camera here. This is still the 5 megapixel sensor and 1080p video. It's not the 8 found on the iPhone 4S and 5. It's got the dual core A5 chip, so I think that's clocked at a gigahertz and most likely underclocked to run 800 megahertz. And then there's this feature in the bottom left. Um, I believe that is for putting a little, um, I don't want to say bracelet, but something to keep it on your wrist. It'd be good for kids, I guess, so you don't lose it. Um, Software-wise, we talked to, or they talked about iTunes, I believe, 10.7 today, coming out in October, that will kind of redo the App Store and the iTunes Store, make them a little bit easier, a little bit more streamlined, and kind of blend iCloud into iTunes. So a lot of what Apple's doing here with their software is making everything work together really well. If you think about it, over the last several years, they've come out with a lot of new hardware and a lot of new software, and they've kind of all built their own house on this block. And what they're trying to do is combine all those houses into a big Apple hotel so everything works together better and more seamlessly. Um, and that is definitely going to be welcome. It's, I mean, it's easy to use right now, and it's only going to get better. So I am excited for the iPhone 5. Uh, people say it's no different or incorrect. It is a larger screen, which was really, really uh, desired. We now have better Wi-Fi. We have better uh, cellular connection with LTE. The camera, uh, the motion sensor, I think, or the, uh, the, the stabilization, image stabilization sensor or software, however that works, has changed. Supposedly, it's a little bit better, which is welcome. Uh, with the 4, <clears throat> it was pretty much hard. With the 4S, they softened it up a little bit with some software or however that hardware works, and now it's, uh, I guess, a step further. So leave your thoughts on Apple's event today. Tim Cook hosted it. There was no one more thing thing because that was Mr. Jobs' thing. Um, so that's about all I have. I think it was a successful event. I'm looking forward to watch the keynote tonight. Looks like they have their little video up, but I'm sure the keynote will be up later on today. So if I missed anything, go ahead and throw it down below. Leave me some comments. Subscribe if you like the channel. Check out, check out our tech blog at techinform.us. We're trying to get back into that. I know I've said it before, but 
Uh, we're going to push a little bit harder this time. We've already got some content up. Look at that. Good news. And I will talk to you guys on a future video, which I would like to do this week, but more than likely it will be next week. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.